Why do FPV drones need gyros? Why can't they just react to the environment and rely on pilot input? When you say react to the environment, what do you mean? Like with 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 optical camera image processing? The gyro is a sensor that is used to react to the environment. The gyro detects the rotation of the drone. The pilot's inputs command a certain rotation of the drone. The gyro is doing exactly what you're saying, reacting to the environment. Um, if you mean like sensors that detect the, the, the you know, the, the like what, like radar sensors, LIDAR sensors that detect, no. Yeah. Um, the gyro tells the flight controller how the quadcopter is moving. And the fundamental thing the pilot does is tell the aircraft how to move. And it looks at how the aircraft is moving and relies on the pilot's input then to tell it what it needs to do. When you talk about reacting to the environment, you're talking about other sensors, like sensors like rangefinders, like LIDAR sensors, like things that are sensing the environment, the ground, and so forth, and then moving the aircraft in relation to it. And that's much more sophisticated. The most basic thing the aircraft needs to do is detect its own orientation and movement. You, you, you couldn't do... I'm, I never say never, but like even if you had an aircraft that was relying on sonar, lidar, etc., you still would have a gyro, so it could get a very precise readout of its own movements, and you still would use that. Does Betaflight benefit from flight controllers that have more than one gyro? Um, so there's two things to say about this. First of all, there are some flight controllers that have dual gyros but only use one gyro at a time. And in the CLI, you switch between which gyro they're using. This is not that interesting. Like, they would have one of them with a uh, you know a 32k capable gyro, and one of them with an 8k capable gyro. That's 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 all kind of silly these days, um, because well, Betaflight first of all doesn't do 32k anymore. All the gyros are doing basically the same uh, sampling rate, and like. You would have two gyros, so like if you damaged one gyro, you could switch to the second one. Okay, so you have a spare gyro, I guess. But it's not that interesting. The gyros all perform very well. There's not that. It's not like we're going to have one or the other, and one's going to do better in some position, some circumstance. You're going to switch between them. So these days, we don't see very many flight controllers with dual gyros. Um, there was another kind of uh, another reason to have two gyros, known as sensor fusion. And with centrifusion, what you do is you have two gyros and you mount them on the board. If you, you see that if you have two gyros and both of them are mounted facing the same direction, they both will measure the exact same vibrations. They both will read out the exact same data, but there will be a slight difference in the data because of the noise level. The gyros, will have, they'll, have, they'll have random noise and they'll output slightly different data but you won't be able to do anything with that. But very smart people figured out that if you mount the gyros like at 90 degrees to each other, then what you can do is you can like subtract the y-axis from one gyro from the x-axis of the other gyro and you can cancel out the noise. How does that work? I don't know. It's math. It's math and engineering that I'm not going to try to explain right now. But the idea is that by having dual gyros, mounted at separate orientations. One of one way it's done is 90 degree orientation and then sometimes they're also at 45 degree orientation. I don't know why. And then you do some fancy math and basically you increase the signal to noise of the gyros. You push the noise floor down and you get more accurate data. That's called sensor fusion. Betaflight is capable of doing sensor fusion um, but we still don't see a lot of flight controllers that are actually doing that and here's why. The problem with sensor fusion is we're taking the data from two sensors and we're combining it together. What if one of those sensors is screwed up? Now we're injecting bad data in with the good data and we're not actually getting a better result. We're getting a worse result. And there wasn't 
well, I'm not saying it couldn't have been done, but it was never done. Like you would think, well, I just look at the data and if one of them is wildly off, then I assume that one's broken. Well, how do you know which one's broken? How do you know which one's right and which one's wrong? You could say if the two gyros diverge by more than a certain amount, then probably one of the gyros is bad, but you still don't know which gyro is bad. So for all the promise that sensor fusion had, what you'd end up with is you'd end up with a situation where, I, I, I don't know, my flight controller is flying like shit. What should I do? And actually, if you went in and you turned off one of the gyros, you could, by process of elimination, figure out which of the gyros was the bad gyro and then go down and only use the good gyro and then your flight controller would work again. But because you had two gyros on the flight controller, you doubled the chances that one of them was going to go bad over the lifespan of the flight controller. And so what happens is these flight controllers come out, they have sensor fusion. Oh, big deal. Your quadcopter flies so much better. No, it doesn't. It flies basically the same. I don't know. Maybe it was better. Who knows? And then the, you have twice as much chance that over the lifespan of the, of the flight controller, one of the gyros goes bad and starts flying like crap. And then what do you do? So basically, yes, theoretically, there's an advantage to having dual gyros. But practically speaking, we don't really do it very much anymore in beta flight because of that reason.